Here I've got this nice problem that's from the 2018 Cyprus National Math Olympiad. So let's see what it says. Our goal is to find all natural numbers that are bigger than or equal to 2, such that in base n, the number 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, that's 5 1s, is a perfect square. So let's just recall what it means to write a number in base n expression before we get started. So a number written in base n that has digits a m, a m minus 1, all the way down to a 3, 2, 1, 0, base n, so that's what I have here, is the sum a sub m n to the m plus a sub m minus 1 in n to the m minus 1 plus all the way down to a sub 2 n squared a sub 1 n plus a sub 0. And generally, you take ai to be between 0 and n minus 1. There's actually a nice Putnam problem that asks you to look at base 10 over representations where you, allow where you allow this AI to be equal to 10. But apart from that problem, you always take those digits to be between zero and one less than the base. So here are a couple of examples. So in base five, the number one, two, four is one times 25 plus two times five plus four. This is the five squared digit. This is the five to the first digit. This is the five to the zero digit. So written in base 10, what do we have here? Well, that's going to be 25 plus 10. So that's 35 plus four is uh, 30 is 39. And then in base 4, the number 3, 2, 1, 1, that'll be 3 times 4 cubed plus 2 times 4 squared plus 4 plus 1. So I won't work that out. But you could do a bunch more examples built off of this. Okay, so now that we've got this taken care of, let's jump into our solution. Hey guys, I'm Justin, and I'd like to ask you to consider subscribing to the channel. Me and Michael are working really hard towards reaching our goal of pi 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I believe that we can do it. Thanks for all your support, and enjoy the video. Okay, so now let's go into our solution. So let's start by supposing that 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, so in other words, 5, 1's base n is a perfect square. I'll call that x squared. And now let's use our formula to write this in kind of a more familiar way. So this is going to be our n to the 0 coefficient. So this is our n to the zero place, our n to the first, second, third, fourth place, and they all have a coefficient of one. So that means we have the equation x squared equals n to the fourth plus n cubed plus n squared plus n plus one. So in fact, this statement over here is equivalent just to finding all perfect squares of this form. But I think wrapping it up in this statement is like quite a bit nicer. Okay, so now where could we go from here? Well, generally when you're asked to find out when things are perfect squares, there's only going to be a few possible small solutions. And also the general strategy for showing something is not a perfect square is to bound it between two consecutive perfect squares. But it turns out that this n to the fourth plus n cubed plus blah 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 term is a little bit hard to deal with because all the coefficients of these are the same and they're all equal to one. And whenever you square a binomial or a trinomial, you get different coefficients of these things, except for the case when the coefficients are four, then a lot of the coefficients from what you squared happen to be the same. Anyway, all of this is to be said that this actually uh, motivates us to multiply this whole thing by four. And let's notice that'll give us 2x quantity squared equals 4n squared plus 4n cubed plus 4n squared plus 4n plus 4. And now our goal is to put this object between two squares. Great. So let's maybe see how we could do that. So let's look at the top half of this, and I just noticed this should have been an n to the fourth, and see if we can get a perfect square that mimics the top half of this. And we can, and that'll be 2n squared plus n quantity squared. 
So notice if we multiply this out, we'll get 4n squared plus 4n cubed plus n squared. So that mimics the first two terms of our would-be perfect square. Furthermore, this is very clearly always less than our perfect square, which is 2x squared. And let's just point out that this occurs always. Now what we'd like to do is hopefully have the perfect square just above this one is oftentimes larger than 2x squared. Okay, so let's see how we could do that. So let's say we want uh, 2x quantity squared, in other words, our object right here, to be strictly less than 2n squared plus n plus 1 quantity squared. So why would that be helpful? Well, then we'll have our perfect square between two consecutive perfect squares. We've got something squared and then that something plus one squared, but clearly there are no perfect squares between two consecutive perfect squares. Okay, so let's maybe multiply this out and see what that really gives us. Multiplying this thing out will give us four n to the fourth plus four n cubed plus 5n squared plus 2n plus 1. Okay, great. And that motivates the following question. And that will be for what n, I'll just say natural numbers, do we have this guy right here, which is 4n to the fourth, plus 4n cubed plus 5n squared plus 2n plus 1 is strictly bigger than this 2x quantity squared. But let's recall this 2x quantity squared with, was this 4n to the fourth plus 4n cubed plus 4n squared plus 4n plus 4. Great. But there's actually quite a bit that can cancel here. This 4n to the fourth will cancel this 4n to the fourth. This 4n cubed will cancel this 4n cubed. And then we're left with a quadratic inequality. So let's move some things around on that quadratic inequality and notice we get 5n squared minus 4n squared. That's gonna give us n squared. We have 2n minus 4n, that's gonna be minus 2n. And then we have one minus four, that's gonna be minus three. So in other words, we wanna determine for what n natural numbers do we have this occurring. This quadratic expression is bigger than zero. But luckily this quadratic expression is very factorable. We can factor this as n minus one times n minus three. And we want that to be bigger than zero. Well, notice that's going to be bigger than zero when n is bigger than three. So here we get that n is bigger than three because if n is bigger than three, then n minus three is bigger than zero and n minus one is bigger than zero. And then furthermore, the only roots of this polynomial occur at one and three. And so if you're to the right of three, you'll always be bigger than zero. So that means we get down here that n is bigger than three. So let's summarize what we've just shown. So we've just shown that our perfect square, this 2x quantity squared, is strictly less than this guy and strictly bigger than this guy when n is bigger than 3, which tells us the only possibilities are for n to be equal to 2 or equal to 3. So let's check each of those. So we just got done showing that if n is greater than 3, then our number 11111 base n is not a perfect square. And let's recall that was because 4 times our number, which is a perfect square if our number is a perfect square because it's the product of two perfect squares, is strictly between consecutive perfect squares. And those consecutive perfect squares are 2n squared plus n, quantity squared, and 2n squared plus n plus 1 quantity squared. 
And if you're in between two consecutive perfect squares, then you cannot be a perfect square. Okay, so that means that n must be equal to two or n must be equal to three. And so let's check each of those cases one at a time to see if either of them give us perfect squares. So for n equals two, we'll get two to the fourth, which is 16, plus two cubed, which is eight, plus two squared, which is four, plus two plus one. But let's see, if you add that up, we get 16 plus four is 20, and then eight plus two is 10. That gives us 30, 30 plus one is 31. 31 is prime, so that's clearly not a perfect square. So let's jump into the n equals three case. So that'll give us three to the fourth, which is 81, plus 27, that's three cubed, plus nine, plus three, plus one. Okay, so let's see, 81 plus nine is 90, and then 27 plus three is 30. 90 plus 30 is 120 plus one is 121, but that's 11 squared. So in fact, we get a perfect square in the n equals three case. And because of our previous argument, that's the only solution to this problem. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.